Intel's GPUs get 20% faster. There's a Toy Story PC and NVIDIA's GPUs are worse than you thought this generation. Let's get into the hot news, everybody. I'm your bright host. We're gonna be going over the hottest tech news I can find on the internet while you enjoy your breakfast this Tuesday, June 24th, 2025. We're gonna start off today talking about a little discovery that was made regarding these bad boys right here. That is Intel's graphics, both integrated and discrete, finding out that if you disable some of the security measures that have been put in place against things like Spectre and Meltdown, you can get up to 20% better performance on the GPUs just by turning all of this off. Now, currently, this is only being tested in a version of Ubuntu, also known as a version of Linux. But one of the things to note is that there are redundancies in the security stuff that's happening in the Linux kernel, so you don't necessarily need it for the GPU side of things. Turns out that uh, keeping yourself safe is slowing you down a bit. So if you want some faster FPS for just a bit, you can turn off the Spectre vulnerability patches and then play your games and then turn them back on when you're done for the rest of whatever you might be doing on your PC. I'm sure there's no issues with doing that whatsoever, but sometimes there can be issues with charging your devices. Not so with today's video sponsor. Did you know that the average American driver spends about an hour behind the wheel per day? Well, I didn't either until I Googled that for this video. Either way, that's a decent chunk of time behind the wheel and plenty of time for your phone that's pumping Spotify and maps to lose some battery. Today's sponsor basis is here to make sure your phone and kind of anything else you want to charge is juiced up even in the car. Basis Prime Chip VR2 Max Car Charger is a nifty little gadget that plugs right into your auxiliary power to deliver up to 100 watts across four devices and even features dual 31 and a half inch retractable USB-C cables to keep your console area nice and tidy and stretch all the way to the people in the back seat. The Prime Trip V2 Max also features a 450 degree dual axis rotation with 270 degrees of motion horizontally and 180 degrees vertically, so you can just have the right fit no matter your console layout. Recently, we picked up a truck to be our company vehicle for work-related errands. Old Marv here has seen plenty of use recently, and with the five of us coming and going, having a powerful and convenient charging solution means even with a packed car on a long day of running around, all our phones can be charged and ready. Something else we run into here in Pittsburgh is the frequent loss of power for whatever reason. And while we have some safeguards in the office to let us keep working, it's nice to know that with the Prime Trip VR2, we could power a mobile workstation from the cab of the truck for a MacBook to AirPods, phones, and even our cameras. As with everything, when you're driving, safety is top priority. And Basis has engineered the Prime Chip VR2 lineup with temperature and voltage protection, all wrapped up in a flame retardant shell. The connector of the charger also features anti-slip clips, so once you plug it in, it stays in place while you're driving. Also, if you're looking for something to just keep a smaller array of devices charged on the go, Basis also offers the Prime Trip VR2 30 watt option with one retractable 2.6 foot USB-C cable and an additional USB-C port. This little fella offers everything its 100 watt big brother does in a more entry level package. Grab either member of the Basis Prime Trip VR2 retractable car charger family today by checking out the links in the description below. And again, huge thanks to Basis for sponsoring today's video. Well, that charger can charge your phone up speedily, Intel looks to be making some shakes and bakes very speedily as well, with them announcing that they're gonna be laying off nearly their entire marketing division, at least according to the reports that are out there, and replacing it with an outside firm. Intel saying that they're doing this to be leaner, faster, more efficient, and working with Accenture to have a longtime partner to work on their marketing outside of the company. Additionally, one of the big things is that uh, they're gonna use AI for their marketing. So they're gonna let their employees know whether or not they get to keep their jobs as of July 11th, but they're gonna be replaced with an outside firm utilizing AI and reports are that they're gonna have to stay on in order to train the outside firm on how Intel does marketing stuff. It's a, it's a very strange situation that's going on there. This is on top of the, I think, 10,000 plus employees that they're expected to be laying off on their foundry side of things. So a lot's being uh, reduced over at Intel, whereas with AMD, they're adding the 9600X3D finding its way onto AMD's product sheets online at least, no release date or price point at the current moment, but the 9600X3D getting official acknowledgement by AMD across their website. We're expecting to see that it is essentially a 9600X, but with 3DV cache. 
that's the that's the vibe. Shocking, I know. But what I am actually shocked about is what MSI announced over the weekend, which is their Toy Story collaboration PC. I'm shocked because I never really thought Disney would get into the DIY PC space, but we'll talk about how that's maybe not as big of a deal as I thought it was. But there's a lot of cool parts that are going into this. A Buzz Lightyear RTX 5070, a Woody version Z890 Gaming Plus motherboard with a little character on its CMOS battery. You've got the claw, which is going to be the PC case as well as the Zerg power supply and one of those Pete's Planet Alien CPU coolers. And then you can put it all together to get a super setup Toy Story version of a gaming PC. You do have to go with one of the worst NVIDIA GPUs that was launched, the 5070, as well as going with one of the worst Intel platforms, the Z890, but you get a very beautiful looking PC out of it, even if it's not the fastest thing on the market. However, you can't get it anywhere outside of Taiwan. This appears to be a very limited edition. Once it's sold out, it's completely gone. You can pre-order it right now over on MSI's Taiwanese page, and it includes some RAM and an SSD in case you wanna buy it for roughly $2,700, but that also is probably one of the reasons why they could get distribution rights for it, and that's because it's locked down to a single country. It's not being sold all across, but uh, this, I actually really like this. This is some of the best like uh, collaboration PC stuff that I've seen. I'm excited by it. I, we have joked about sending somebody from the UFD team to Taiwan to go pick one up. I'm not sure if we're uh, set on that, but I gotta decide soon before these things sell out because I, ooh, uh, once they're gone, they're gone. But hopefully uh, Reese can save me some money on some other PC parts, so maybe I can afford that flight ticket to Taipei for one of the team members. Yo, welcome back to UFD Deals, bringing the hottest tech deals on the internet. It's me and Catelyn this time. But let me jump into the deals for you guys today. Starting off, we have this KTC 27 inch 1440p 100Hz IPS gaming monitor, which you can grab for $109.99, making it $25 off. But then doubling up on the monitor deals, we have this LG 32 inch 4K 60Hz VA smart monitor, going for only $169.99 with the code MONITOR100, making it $220 off. And then lastly, we have my personal handheld of choice, the Lenovo Legion Go, which I have at home, rocking the Ryzen Z1 Extreme and a 512 gig SSD for $499.99, making it $200. And hey, with that, the deals are done. You can find these and more linked in the video description down below. But until next time, I'm going to hand you off back to Brett for the rest of your hot news. Cheers. Well, Reese, turns out that uh, somebody got a great deal by buying a GPU over at Micro Center because they not only got an AMD graphics card, but it was a Wombo Combo NVIDIA card as well. So this Redditor posted that they had a 9070 XT that was acting funny. They couldn't get a second display to operate with one of the second display connectors. And so they traded it in at Micro Center and got a fresh new Asus Tough 9070 XT. And if you're looking at it, you might think that looks like a typical 9070 XT. You see on the back, it says AMD Radeon, except for on the side, it says GeForce RTX. A little oopsie doopsie going on in the production line, putting NVIDIA and AMD together in harmonious matrimony. However, this appears to be the inverted form of a GPU that was found out about a month ago over on the Asus form of a 5070 Ti tough card that said Radeon on the side. So maybe we found the matching pair of the shroud that should have gone on this 5070 Ti, and they got the one that should have gone on the 9070 XT. The person who got the 50 70 Ti does not appear to be happy about it in their Reddit post about it, but it, I thought this was a fun little story. I'd keep it as a keepsake. But I would get it if you it, if you wanted people to know you had GeForce RTX and it said Radeon, you would feel you'd feel bamboozled and uh, saddened. But while Nvidia and AMD are unexpectedly teaming up, Microsoft is looking to intentionally team up with other PC storefronts out there with them announcing that the Xbox app is indeed going to add various different storefronts to its PC loading the setup so that you could have other leading storefronts and outside of Xbox Game Pass and Battle.net. Now it's not clear specifically which ones they're talking about. However, they've already had promotional images showing off Epic Games and Steam being included. So that's one of the reasons since people are speculating that's gonna be part of it. I hope it's not just like a EA Play or something else like that, and that it's actually the, the ones that people use. But in case you've been using an RTX 50 series card, uh, you might have noticed that it's not necessarily as good as you may have wanted it to be. 
And the people over at Computer Base have found out just how not good is the 50 series and just how good is the RX 9000 series by concocting a test that allowed them to test IPC or instructions per clock. Basically how much stuff you can get done every single time your GPU does a little tick doing billions of ticks per second. It all adds up to being faster overall. And with the RX 9000 series GPUs, it looks to be a massive improvement. You're getting over 20% improvement in just regular raster performance. You're getting over 30% improvement in ray tracing every single time that clock ticks compared to the 9060 XT versus the 7600 XT. So this is accounting for things like the difference in the CPU clock speed. It's also accounting for the VRAM differences that happens not with these cards because they have roughly the same, but with things like the RTX 50 series cards. Because when we look at that, what we find is that they are roughly identical. The 5070 Ti and the 4070 Ti Super look to be nearly on par when it comes to their instructions per clock, both in regular gaming performance as well as in ray tracing. Just basically no difference between these cards whatsoever. You add on to the fact that there's hardly any efficiency gains to be made with these GPUs as well, and it's just an underwhelming generation for many. But this is coming alongside reports that AMD's next architecture, UDNA, the replacement for RDNA 4, it's not going to be RDNA 5. However, one of the well-known leakers in the GPU space is indicating that potentially we might get another 20% better raster performance per compute unit, or that should roughly translate to IPC, thereby increasing AMD's gains even more over what we're seeing with NVIDIA. Now, the RTX 60 series might actually have some improvements with it, especially if they move on to a different process node, because that's one of the reasons it's very stagnant right now is that there is no actual improvements that they're finding from how they're making the chips. It would all have to come from the architecture and <laughs> and ain't really architecture anything new, whereas it looks like AMD is working very hard to make sure that their architecture is bringing the advancements, even if they can't get the process nodes to be even better. So let me know if you're uh, excited about the next generation of AMD GPUs, the RX 11,000 series, if that's what it happens to be. Let me know down below in the comments while I see what you had to say in Friday's episode of Hot News. We got some random doge saying 28th in reference to me saying it was Batman and Robin's 18th anniversary. I, You're right. You're right. I don't know why I said 18. It's an extra decade. I, I was seven years old when I went to see Batman and Robin 28 years ago. That makes that makes sense. It was the 28th anniversary of Bat Nibbles. You're welcome. And then we got Derivative saying, happy birthday, Brad. Mine's tomorrow. What did you get for your birthday? I got myself a fresh paint job for my office. Kyler and the team got me an ice cream cake at the office. That was awesome. And then as far as like my family side of things, I got myself uh, a surprise trip to South Africa to surprise my wife while she was over there with my three older kids. That was kind of like my combo Father's Day birthday present that I, uh, me and my kids decided to, to, to work together on. I got a beautiful experience out of it and it was just happened to have been before my birthday. And then Derry saying, wait a minute, you're back in the US. Yes, as mentioned um, in the South African episodes, there are still a lot of things that have to get done in order for us to officially make the move over to South Africa for the operations, but uh, they're they're in the works, everything's going smoothly. The, the trip that I made, we made a lot of progress in a lot of different ways and everything's looking really good for for our return so uh just hold on to that and then arrow break saying working on your b-day man i'm sorry happy b-day bro i'm not i uh I, I have no qualms about working on my birthday i'm not one of those people who like celebrates dates too much like i kind of every day is about the same for me like i get the idea i understand it i get why people like to celebrate but for me i'd rather like enjoy every day of my life like I I'd like I want to live every day like I want to rather than try to make one day super special. So that also means like not about vacations. I want to build a life that like I actively want to live all of the time. And you know, it's it's uh, not, not everybody agrees with that perspective. I totally get it. This is kind of personal. And like even in my relationship with my wife, she's not that way at all. She very much likes to celebrate. And so that's that's fine. I'll do that. But uh, it's not natural to me. For me, I'm just like it's it's another day. Like I get to live a life uh, that I could have never dreamed or imagined. I have a beautiful family. I have a fantastic job. I have great team members who I get to work with all of the time. I have you guys watching our videos. It's like, I have computer parts galore. I have a video game. Like my, my life is very, very good. Like I just, I, uh, I don't, I, I get to celebrate every day. I don't necessarily need to take a, a day off. 
uh, from my life just because uh, I, my my calendar ticked over one more year. And before this calendar ticks over, I'm going to end this episode of Hot News. I'll see you back here for more of the hottest tech news tomorrow.